Okay, this is 4.4. This is Independence Part 2. Okay, we'll start off with this theorem that says if we have a set of vectors, they are linearly dependent if and only if one of the vectors in the set can be written as a linear combination of the others. So the idea is if we have an independent set and then we add a vector to that set, let's say we add the element w, and our claim is that it's dependent. And if we write it out as a linear combination, the original set, which is independent, is equal to zero because that's the definition of independence. And then we add kw. Well, we can move kw to the other side. And since this is zero, this is basically a non-zero solution. Hence, it's dependent. If you look in R2, let's not throw out what we've learned before in algebra. In R2, if we have a system, we can see here that the second line is a multiple of the other. And if we graph them, they're actually the same line. This is called the dependent. They're the same line because you can see here they are a multiple of each other. Okay, so if we have a set S that has R elements and it's a set of vectors in Rn, well, if R is greater than N, then S must be linearly dependent. That kind of is a spin-off of the last theorem that we had, where if you have too many, it's going to be dependent. So this next theorem says, if we have n vectors that are independent in our n, so if all the vectors are independent and there's n of them in our n, then this set also spans our n. So that's going to become an important theorem to help us show spanning. So an example of this, So here, we have three vectors in R3. Since the same number of vectors in R3 from the theorem, these three vectors span R3. So think about it this way. If we have the same amount of vectors in Rn that are independent, if we add another vector in the set, it's going to be dependent. But if we take away one of these vectors, it's not going to span. We saw that in the last section. So having the same amount, so having the same amount, given that they're independent, also guarantees that it spans. It's going to be an easier way of showing that it spans than what we were doing in the last section. So if we have a set of polynomials, they are lin linearly independent in Pn if it goes all the way up to Xn. So here we have, as an example, P2 is going to be also spanned by these three, since these three are independent. Now we're going to talk about the independence of functions, and it's called the Ronskin. But before we start that, let's look at an example. So this set is dependent, 
And we can see this two ways. The first way is we can see this function. We know cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So we can see that cosine of 2x is can be written in terms of the other two. So our second method, we write them as a linear combination. We can replace that with the identity. And then by just observing this, I think I can plug in And I'll adjust it a little bit. So I just found a linear combination that equals zero. So therefore dependent, since there exists a non-zero solution, which we just found. Those C's don't have to equal to zero. So we have a set of functions that are n minus 1 times differentiable. We lay across all of our functions across the top. The second row is the derivative of all those functions, and then the second derivative, and so forth, to the n minus 1 derivative, so that we've made a square matrix. The determinant of this we call w of x, which is the determinant. And we call that determinant the wrong scan. What we have here is if we write this as a linear combination, we've created the linear system which is basically creates ax equals zero and we know if we call that a, that a is my Vronskian and same as before, if the determinant's not equal to zero, it's independent. So this leaves us with this result. If the Wronskian is not zero, then all the constants are zero. Thus, the set is an independent set. If the Wronskian, if the Wronskian is zero for some x, then a non-zero solution exists. Thus, the set is a dependent set. Let's look at some examples. So let's show these three functions forms an independent set. Let's look at the Ron scan. To set it up, we set up our three functions on the top. Take the first derivative and the second derivative and work it out. So this function is never equal to zero, so that does not equal to zero. So our conclusion is those functions are linearly independent. So our Ron scan therefore the Ron scan is not equal to zero, so the set is independent. So we want to show this set is independent. Since our last one had the same angle and they were independent, we fully expect this to be independent too, but let's see what it looks like to show it.
where I'm sure there's some product to sum that we can find that that's not non-zero that we can fit that into. Another method we can use is to plug in a particular point and show that that's non-zero to show that the functions are independent on that interval. Last example. And there you have it. Okay, thanks for watching.